You've reached a voicemail of Dave Mahesh. Please leave a message after the tone. I can't understand why you didn't want to try to work through things. Like, you didn't seem all the way in, never at any point, but you... Was it your fear of commitment or was it that the comedy and acting was more important and you felt like you couldn't have both or work at both? Like, I don't know, but I do know that I loved you and I would have been there with you all the way through. My boy, he's your boy, he's fantastic. You're gonna have a great time. Dave Mahesh, everybody. Oh, man. So dope that live shows are fucking back to back. I think they are, I don't know. I went to a rap concert in, a month ago in New York at Webster Hall. And I, I, I love rap music, but I, I feel I'm getting too old. Uh, to listen to young rap, like not to listen, but to go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I can listen from home. I'm like, <laughs> at home I'll put on, I'll be like, yeah. But then if I go to a building with like, I'm like, no, I don't know, I get anxiety. <laughs> and I went to see Baby Keem and I love Baby Keem. That's the first time I realized I'm old. <laughs> like I know I'm like 41 now, but 40, I woke up with one knee hurting. I go, it's over. <laughs> Do when you wake up with like one, I don't know how, you're young. When one knee, you're like, I was like, man, I gotta start wearing New Balance. That's what I said. <laughs> Legit, my knee hurt, and I said New Balance. That was the, I went on the internet, and I got 10 pairs. I go, it's time to get, I can't even walk any, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you walk, and you're like, I gotta take breaks walking? That's sad. And you one time I jumped on a bus, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And you also know you're old when the bus driver lets you stay up with them and talk the whole time. That's an old man shit. Just you and the bus driver, he goes, hey, you getting off here? Stay on. And you're high-fiving them. You do the whole route with them. You're like, this is great, dude. <laughs> so I'm at this concert and I'm like, yo, I feel, I feel old because I, everyone is like 19. Even the lighting when I went was hard for my eyes. I almost wanted to find the sound engineer. I go, hey, can you tone it down? There's too many. What's this? It keeps doing up and down. Just one, give a spotlight, right? And there was a lot of fog. That's how you know you're old as fuck. You're like, holy fuck, why is there so much fog? I can't see them anymore. That's the first time I felt it in all my body that I'm old. Because I saw all 18 and 19 year olds. I go, and they, not that they were bull, I just felt like a father right away. I don't know what it was. I saw them and I go, I'm a father. I, I didn't say it, but I remember a kid walked by me. I go, hey, do you have enough water? I said that. I swear, I said that. Like no one put a gun to my head and the kid, he was alarmed. He goes, huh? I go, water, are you hydrated? You're gonna go into the mosh pit later. I think this is very key for you. And he goes, stop being weird, fam. And I go, okay. And then I saw this other phenomenon. I didn't know. Because I forgot, when I was young, I could leave the house in the winter with no jacket, just a t-shirt. Do you know what I mean? I was you're young, your mom's like, yo, you need a jacket? You go, fuck you, mom, I don't need a jacket. Heart is purple, I don't need <laughs> I can beat the winter, right? So much energy and youth. When you're 40, well, bro, you bring everything. Bro, I brought a bubble jacket, a scarf, mittens. I try to coat check mittens. Dude, I, and you care about your jacket when you hand it over. You're like, hey, don't fucking wrinkle it. Put, uh, put it where I could see it. Put it where I could see it. No, no, you're in the back. No, 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 move theirs and put my, fuck it, let me come around. I'm coming around. I'm gonna come around and put the jacket. Don't touch this, I paid a lot of money for it. It's hard to find a winter coat. These young kids looking at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's hard to find a winter coat. You use one every seven years. If I fuck this one up, I gotta go back out to the stores. Just chill out, let me take care of this, right? <laughs> then I saw something I didn't see at a concert. It was like, it had like those uh, guardrails and behind them, there's chairs, there's people sitting. <laughs> These 
I, and I look over, I go, why? I go, why are they sitting? They're like, it's if you're injured or you had a surgery, you can see it. I go, whoa, fuck. I go, my back hurts, let me get in. <laughs> and then when I turn, I see my friend, my friend Joey is in there. Joey's young, dude, Joey's like 25. I go, how the fuck did he get back there? I go, Joey, how'd you get back there? He goes, bro, I'm a plus one. My boy had surgery. I'm his plus one. I go, they give out plus ones? He goes, I don't think they give them out. I, uh, we can ask, so we go to the security guard, and these security guards are like, they hate their lives. I feel, I don't know, they're just miserable. They don't, there's no sunshine. They, I, I go, my boy goes, can he come in? She goes, no. She wasn't even looking at me. She goes, no, you already got a plus one. That's it, you good. And there's like fucking seven empty chairs. I go, shit, and Joey goes, yo, sit tight, bro. Just go hang out over there, I got you. So I'm waiting in the back, he comes over. And look, the concert hasn't started. When I, I like, there's, there's no DJ on. It's just music from the speaker and I'm tired. That's. Like nothing happening. It's 7.07 7, and I'm still trying to figure out how to sit down. So Joey comes over, he goes, yo man, you look sad as shit. That's what he says. I go, what? He goes, you look sad. We gotta fix this, dude. You're weirding everyone out. Let's go. He goes, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this. I'm gonna talk to her. I go, okay, if I come with you, I don't wanna be too close to you. I don't wanna hear the rejection she gives me if she does. So maybe two, maybe five feet away. He goes, fine. So, right, and walks up. This first thing he says to her when he gets here, he goes, yo, he goes, he goes, yo, look how fucking lonely my boy is. <laughs> but he didn't tell me his opening line, so I went like this, I go, what? And then he, so, but he doesn't stop, because he looked at me, he goes, and he goes, I'm gonna turn it up. I go, turn what up? He goes, yo, look at this guy, man. He don't have a family. He got no kids. He has no girlfriend, his sad life, dude, his back hurts, he's alone, he looks like a weirdo, he looks like a creep, and this dude is 45 years old. I, I go, I'm, not, I'm 41, how did he up my age? I swear to you, the lady, the security lady goes, 45, come on in. She <laughs> and when I went in, she goes, do you want a cushion? She gave me a cushion. I didn't even know you even had those. I sat on the cushion like, it is best concert ever, dude, I was like, I love Baby Keem. <laughs> Keem's great. But when you tell someone, not tell someone if you're like 41 and they go, do you have a partner? You're like, no. And they're always worried. They go, are you all right? I go, I don't think so, I guess. Now that you say it that way. Like I see a therapist and some Reiki people, like that's a, but I'm trying to figure out why I'm alone. So, but look, I'll tell you this though, every girl I've been with, every ex, most of them, all of them I would say are doing really well in life. <laughs> every single one of them, dude, every single one of them. And, and I, this is very arrogant, but I'd like to think that I, I guided them to the, to the prom, you know what I mean? I was the fuck boy that they went, no, 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 gotta fix my life. I take pride in that. I check, I check every month on Instagram. I find them, I look at it, I put the phone up like this, I go, another house, and I put it down, I go, the job's done. <laughs> this always gets a bad rap, though, I, and I realize this, it's like side, when someone's a side, you know, like, I'd always hear girls be like, oh, I'm the other one, and I was like, man, that must suck. Then you become the other one, and you're like, this is fire. <laughs> I don't have to put up with the, I'm not in the relationship. I'm just lingering. I'm having a good time, you know what I mean? I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm doing awful things, but I'm having a good, you know what I mean? I'm having a good time. I don't have to put up with the, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm there for both of them, do you know what I'm saying? Because she yearns him, that's a different, cause she yearns him. She doesn't yearn me, she's just like, made, you know what I mean? This is the, the, this is the bad part, but I yearned Steven, that's what the guy's name was. So she'd be like, I don't know, Steven's being weird. I go, have you tried talking to him more? <laughs> there for her, like a coach, right? I, I'm eating fries. I go, yeah, talk to him. This guy's the best. This guy takes her to her grandmother's funeral. I ain't doing that. I'm just gonna eat her ass at four in the morning. That's all, that's, and drink wine. That's my duty right there. But also, that's sad when they kick you. That's how you know you're not, you're not the yearn for when they kick you, when they, when they do that and they kick you out. Of that. You think you're staying. I don't know if you've been there. You're like, shit, I'll get some pajamas on. She goes, what do you think you're doing? But they never kick you out 
like looking at you. They're like doing something at their table like this and they go, it's time for you to leave. <laughs> you ever get the it's time for you to leave when you try to lay down? <laughs> you ever fix the pillow and go, and she goes, I think it's time for you to leave. I go, huh? She goes, you know what this is, go, right? And you fucking, you don't wanna go because you're lonely inside, that's the truth. So you're at the door bargaining. You're like, fuck, how do I stay? Hey, you wanna get coffee in the morning? She goes, we don't get fucking coffee. She goes, put your shoes on. You got snow boots, it gets the winter. <laughs> Sad as fuck. You're like, yo, 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 I forgot my chapstick in your room. She goes, you, do, you can buy more. There's a 24 hour hasty market around the corner. And you're weirding my cat out. Get the fuck out of here. Shit. <laughs> it's tough. I don't, I, you know, because, and I asked my therapist, I go, why do you think I'm like this? I don't think I asked her that way. I go, because I, I remember I got hurt and then I just became like a coward, obviously, basically, because I didn't want to get hurt anymore. So I started to like, you know, be a coward. Because when you get hurt, when you get heart crushed, it sucks. I remember I got it. It happened and I got robbed in the same day. Yeah, it, it was like bad. But I mean, it was funny because like, you know when you, <laughs> when you get your heart broken and you do that walk where your head is down, like you can't, <laughs> you can't even look at the sky. You're just like, <laughs> you see birds, you're like, man, fuck those birds. Why are they so happy? <laughs> where are they flying to that's important? You're like kicking air, you know, hoping it's a puddle. It hasn't rained at all. You're just kicking air. Everyone knows that guy's hurt. You're like, look at that guy, how sad he's walking. His heart is broken, right? And I knew I was getting robbed because the individual was walking across the street on an angle. I go, that's not real. <laughs> that's not real. Like, who walks like that? And then they had their hand on their like, leg, so they were holding something. And part of me, and I saw kind of, I go, gun. That's what I was saying in my head. I go, gun, gun, gun. But I, part of me was like, man, I wish I could say this out loud. Cause like, dude, I got, you know what I mean? Cause when he got close, I was like, gun, gun. And then it was a gun. I was like, D I nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it, but you can't say that in a robbery, right? You can't be like, hey, do I get a prize? You can't, You're like, fuck, I saw this in the dark. I should get something, right? This is how I knew it was his first time robbing and my first time getting robbed. Cause a squirrel came out of nowhere and he flinched. <laughs> I go, this guy didn't even watch a YouTube video. This is embarrassing. Right? And he took the gun out, very scary, and he put it to my temple, right? And every time I tell, I tell that story, all these dudes are like, yo, I would have fucking grabbed the gun out of his hand <laughs> and threw it in a lake. There's not even a lake in the story. You added that. How, how bro -y is that, that you add a lake in the story? I'll show you how man I am, and I'll throw it in a fucking lake and then nobody could find it. <laughs> what? <laughs> right? And I know he can't, because this guy can't even do the push-pull door at the Dufferin Mall. I know you can't do it. I've seen you walk right into it. You're like, oh, they didn't put the sign up. No, they put the sign up. Get out, we're going home, get in the car. You're not allowed in the mall. We're just gonna get a cannoli and you're gonna take a nap. Your head hurts. Your head hurts. You gotta take a nap. You gotta take a nap, Steven. Um, <laughs> so. So he had, and I can, I can see, like, the trigger finger. I can see it right here, and I was like, shit. I didn't say shit, I couldn't, I was like shook. He goes, give me everything in your pocket. But I couldn't, I thought I could talk. But I couldn't. All that came out was <laughs> And when that's this, you're like, okay, that's the sound. It's like, and he, and again, we're face to face. So he doesn't say anything, but he just gives me a look, and I go, and I fucking, I gave him $200 and I gave him lint. Cause it was in everything in my pocket. I took it literally, right? I go, and, and man, when you give anyone lint, it's very embarrassing. Cause when I dropped the lint, he didn't say anything, but he looked at me and then took the gun and hit me in the head. Like this. Right? And I didn't fall. I thought I was gonna fall, bro. And I, and I was so proud of myself. Because I thought if I ever got robbed, I would fall if they hit me with a gun. But here we are today, didn't fall. I was like, yo, I did not fall. But my mistake was when I bounced back up, I gave him a thumbs up. I shouldn't have done that. 
that really triggered him. <laughs> and he goes, yo, run, or I'm gonna shoot you in the back. And yo, I had Tim's on, unlaced. This guy didn't even give me the props for that. I don't know if anyone here has Tim's. This is very hard. They're heavy as fuck. And I took off. I'm running and I go, yo, I'm dying here. I'm dying. This is Los Angeles. I'm dying in the street, right? And in my head, I was like, yo, you should just try to deflect the bullets. I had no ideas. Obviously, I can't deflect the bullets, but in my head, I was like, try to deflect the bullets. So I just went like this. I went, yeah! Like, I just kept fucking arching my back. Uh, right? It's arching them. And then I'm like, you know what? Start to zigzag. That's gonna fuck them up. So then I start zigzagging. So I'm, how crazy did I look? I was like, yeah! And then zigzag. <laughs> I never looked back. I just pictured this guy just went, fuck it. Gave up, put the gun down, and took a cab home. That's what I thought. He goes, I'll get him next time. That was weird. I've been in love, I've been, I've been, uh, the first time I was in love with, was with a girl named Melissa. I grew up in Windsor, Ontario. Yes, yes, and we went to St. Clair College, and, and you know, she was fire when my boy, Will, he didn't even like her. He just came up to me. He was like, you gotta see Melissa. Like, he was, you gotta see Melissa. She... <laughs> I was like, Will, you into her? He goes, no, man, she's fire. She's got track suits. It's crazy, right? This is when you like, you know when you like, lo like, you like a girl, you go practice before you talk to her. You go, like, home to the mirror, and you practice how you're gonna introduce yourself. So I went to the mirror and I was like, huh, my name is Dave. And I go, no, that's too loud, right? <laughs> and my mom is an Arab mom. She was listening the whole time. So she's like, Habibi. I told you, Habibi, are you all right? Is your stomach, your stomach, are you sick? Did you eat anything? I, and I got angry. I was feisty 21. I go, mom, I'm in love like this. Leave me alone. She goes, Habibi, we're all in love, but come out. You're scaring me. Do you want me to come in and give you a massage? You're weirding me out. <laughs> Nobody wants a massage, Lila. Nobody right now, right? But I had to figure out how I was gonna get into this, right? So I, I talked to Will, I go, you need, to, you need to introduce yourself to her friend, friend zone yourself, so we all can hang out, the four of us. He goes, what? I go, please do it, I need this. I, I like her, he goes, fine, fine. So he does it, like a true best friend. So now we're sitting at his house, the four of us watching Armageddon. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Armageddon. Remember Armageddon? He was so jacked about it. The fucking Bruce Willis gave up his life. Remember he put his hand, I think he put his hand on the glass. I'd never do that. That's a hero right there. I'd be like, bro, man, you can just find another girl. <laughs> so, but we're sitting on the couch, me and Melissa like this, and our hands graze. You know, that hand, like they finally graze and I can feel it in my chest. The butterflies, they're just fucking. And I wanted out loud to be like, I like you a lot. I wanna buy you a house, but I have no money. We'll squat. That's what I wanted to say. But, like, I don't know if I said it, but she has your boyfriend. But I didn't care. Yeah, I didn't care. I didn't care. That's the only time I never cared. I still, even now to this day, I don't care. That's how much I liked her. I don't give a fuck, right? But we couldn't go anywhere. I had my mom's Ford, <laughs> Ford Green Temple. <laughs> so we'd have to drive around Windsor and find parking lots. And this is how I justified that I wasn't doing anything wrong. I never had sex with her. We just dry humped. You can laugh for real if you want. You don't have to hide your laugh. I thought you hid your laugh. It's, that's why, and we dry humped, bro, proper. Like, like, not like whack, not like aggressive, like sensual, right? The windows got fogged up. Our hands were touching each other, right? We're putting our hands on the car like this, right? <laughs> but we didn't know there was a security guard watching the whole time. <laughs> the security guard knocked on the window and he goes, roll it down. I roll it down and he goes, what are you doing? I made the mistake of being too honest, so I start telling him the truth about everything. So I go, hey man, I like her a lot, but she has a boyfriend and we have nowhere to go. So we're dry humping because I don't wanna have sex with her because I think I'm not doing anything wrong if I don't do that, but we're being passionate and that's why we're fogging up the windows. He looked at me and he goes, man, keep doing what you're doing and walked away. 
This is the wild part. He came back with two ginger ales. I don't know why. <laughs> he goes, you might need these. You look parched. That's what I remember him saying. But she told me for months she was gonna leave him, man, and I believed her, I believed her. So one day I was like, we have to deal with this, so let's meet at Tim Hortons. <laughs> we went to Tim Hortons, we sat down, and she looks me in the eye, I was like, so you gonna do it? And she goes, I can't. She starts crying. Yeah. Like, I don't know how she, and I go, shit, I wanted to cry. <laughs> you can't have double cries, so I had to sit there and eat a donut I bought aggressively. <laughs> so she's like, I'm like, uh, right? And I go, maybe, you know, I was just very mad. And she didn't. But I had nowhere to go. My, friend, my dude friends weren't going to help me. I can't go to my Middle Eastern parents. They don't fuck it. They don't care. They don't care. They can't. I remember I walked in and my dad goes, man, what's wrong with your face? That's what he said. I go, a girl broke my heart. He goes, everything's broken, man. The lamp, the car. My bank account, because your mother took everything from it. You can't. Remember this guy, I could, this guy still to this day, I remember one time, he picked me up from a girl's house in the morning. I get in the car, he looks me in the eye, he goes, hooker? <laughs> True story. I go, what? He goes, hooker, man. Were you with a hooker? I go, dad, you don't be with a hooker and stay over all night <laughs> and then have breakfast in the morning. This guy looked me in the eye and goes, maybe the business changed and drove off. <laughs> maybe it did. <laughs> then I moved from there and I moved to Toronto. This is like 14 years ago and I met this, this beautiful lady named uh, Elizabeth. But I, I w was, uh, you know, I made, got little attention from stand-up because when I was in high school, I was hella ugly. I had buck teeth, I had headgear. I had an overbite, I had three warts on my eyes. You, you can laugh, I looked weird. It's funny, when you tell that now to adults, they always go, ah, oh, but it's terrible. Yeah, who said that? Who said it was terrible? You, that's the fucking answer I want from everybody. Everybody gets like, like, like sensitive. No, I was terrible. Nobody in this room would have fucked me back then. Everyone, no one would. This guy for sure wouldn't have. This guy would have threw me in a locker and that's, what I needed to become a comedian, right? <laughs> but, so when I met this girl, we, again, we, we dry humped the first time. <laughs> we spent the night together. But look, my dry humping had elevated from college. I was doing different positions. I dry humped 69. I don't know if you've ever done that. The zipper cut my nose, it was wild. And I would do it again. <laughs> but, but she was dope though, but she was very like, there's a lot of reasons it didn't work out, but she was like very like sexual. I wasn't. She liked to have sex like outdoors, but I, I, I told her I can't, I'm indoors. I can't, there's too much distraction outside. I can't, I can't focus. Inside, maybe a radiator goes off. I can deal with that. So one time we're on a Greyhound and she goes, she goes, I want to give you, she goes, I want to give you a hand job. I go, for no, why? She goes, why not? It'll be fun, it'll be something different. I go, there's too much distraction. Because hand job, you're not, you're just looking. You're just looking straight. So you can see everything. So she's doing a hand job, but you can pick, you're like, I can hear all the noise, I can see. So it's not fun because you go from, oh, right, to be like, ah! Fucking third row, somebody, third row, they looked, they looked, their left eye looked. And uh, I don't know why I'm gonna use the word ejaculating. When you ejaculate, it's not fun because you're, you're too tense. So you're like, huh? You're like, fuck, I think a kid saw. That's what, that's. Dude, when we left the bus, I swear to you, the bus driver looked at me and he gave me a thumbs up. He goes, good job. He goes, I heard you ejaculate from up here, dude. It was fire. It was so fire, dude. Have fun in Oshawa. I think that's what he said. But one of the things, and I, and I, I respect her, she's super dope, but she was like, she, she wanted to try things I, you know, because sometimes you don't, you don't click with someone in certain things, and we didn't click in the sense, she was like, ah, would you choke me? That's what she said. Because she called me timid originally. She was, you're timid sexually. And that's hurtful. 
Because, yeah, because I was on my way to get milk from the kitchen when she said it. And it, <laughs> and it hurt. She's like, but you are. You don't want, you wouldn't choke me? I go, yeah, I mean, we're not in the UFC. It's not in a cage. She goes, it's just, you, you know, you do doggy style missionary. You won't, why won't you choke me? She says, why won't you choke me if we're having sex? I go, because, look, you want to know the truth? She goes, yeah. I go, because I don't know how good I am at choking. I've never done it in my life. What if I'm too good the first time I do it? What if we're having sex and then she's like, choke me, and I go, ah, and I fucking kill you. What happens? The cops show up. <laughs> They're like, what happened? I go, this bitch said I was timid. That's what happened. There's also milk in the kitchen if you guys want some. I'll tell you why, the last thing, I'll tell you why is like it got super toxic and this is the final chapter of why it all it, it like fell apart is I was, we were in Windsor, me, her, and two of my buddies. We were partying. I see a girl in the club that I haven't seen in a while. She takes my, well, I give her my phone and she's like, here's my number. I shouldn't have done it. I didn't know she was, she, I, I didn't know she was watching, but I can feel her energy. I go, this was a mistake. We go back to the hotel. Now all of us are sharing one hotel. So I'm in the bed with my girl and my two buddies are in the other bed. Big mistake, right? Walking down the hallway to get to the room, I hear, like I get a text. I pull the phone out, shouldn't have done that. She, my girl sees it, that the girl text. She goes, what the fuck? Grabs the phone and chucks it down the hallway. Like threw it, you know when your phone, this is, this is a when there was flip phone, so this thing fucking flew. <laughs> But you can't get mad, but you're mad, right? Because you're already in shit, so you gotta be like, play it cool. You're like, why'd you do that? But inside, you're like, you fucking psycho. I don't have $90 if you broke that, right? So you gotta walk there in defeat, pick your phone up, right? Your boys aren't helping. They're like, yo, it's, it, it, something bad's happened. They, and I could feel it in there, because they stopped making eye contact with me. Like, this is, right? So they go to bed, right? We go to bed, and it's, lights are out. I can feel. I just start feeling hands on my neck. I go, what the f And I can, my boys are like, yo, something's, they're, they're like, yo, something's happening. Should we help? They don't want to help because they're scared, right? So then I, she gets on top of me and she starts choking me, but not in a good way. Like she starts and I can't breathe. I go, ah, I go, I go, what are you doing? And she looked me in the eye. She goes, I want you to feel the pain you've caused me for four years. <laughs> When I look back now, that's a fire-ass line. That's some Denzel Washington fucking Oscar nomination performance there. And I respect it. But I can hear my boys go, I think she's choking them, right? <laughs> and my boy goes, I ain't calling the police. If she did that to him, what's she gonna do to us? And they, then they start fake sleeping. That's what they did. These are two of my good friends, fake sleeping, right? I get her off, I run to the bathroom, I go in the, ba the bathroom, she's fidgeting with the door, I'm trying to block her, she like gets in, she pushes the door and I'm, 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 I think I was crying, I go, no, I go, no, please, I'm too young, I don't know what I'm saying, right? But she has like venom in her eyes, she walks over, and I'm wearing shorts, right, to bed, she pulls my shorts down, I go, I don't know what this is, right, and then she starts, Sucking my, she starts blowing, bro, it's in, I don't know what move this was. She starts blowing, but I mean, this is the best blow job I've ever gotten in my life. Now in the past ever. I don't, it, it felt like she thought I was gonna go to the police and she was blowing her way out of a court case. That's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Dave Moran. Thank you guys for coming. Let's stay for his. You want to, you know, like a, you're in a relationship with someone and you want to be like, not that they need you to be strong all the time, but I mean, it, they do, they don't want you to be like so down on yourself or miserable or, or hate yourself or anything like that. So you kind of like hide it for a while. You kind of hide who you are for a while because, you know, when people, and they want you to be vulnerable, but I feel if you're like to an extent further, like you get past this, this, you go to this, I feel like true vulnerability, you know, if you were like, uh, yo, I'm gonna be super real with you and you start to really um, explain your, your, why you hate yourself or your pains or how depressed you are. I don't think it's attractive. <laughs> it's like, I think people are like, 
it's like when someone's like, hey, how's your day? And then you really tell them how your day is. And they're like, I didn't want to know any of that. I think it would have been better if you just said, I'm, all, I'm not feeling good. So I feel sometimes I would just hide that because I was like, I don't want that person to leave. It's just dead to me. Yeah, I'm a toxic person. Yeah, I'm a self indulger. Yeah, I'm a crazy spender. Whoa, but I'm no pretender. No, I'm so done with hiding. Yeah, I'm so done with lying. Yeah, I'm done with disguises. Yeah, I'm so done with hiding. <laughs>